Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're talking about a relatively recent discovery of two planets that we now refer to as super puffs. Let me explain why and also what these planets are actually made out of and welcome to What The Man. Now this is one of those planets and this is actually in a space engine and relatively accurately um, recreated and essentially what you can see here is that it's a very airy planet as a matter of fact it's very 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 low in density it has about 10 times uh, less density than saturn which is the least dense planet in our own solar system the density of saturn is less than the density of water and this object right here, known as Kepler-51d, um, has a density of, well, I guess the closest object you could think of would be cotton candy. Now, at the end of this video, we're going to land on this planet and check out the atmosphere and also what the star looks like from the surface. But before this, let's actually talk a little bit behind the signs of these uh, planets that we discovered, but also how they were formed. And for this, we're going to go to Universe Sandbox and we're going to place Kepler-51 right here with the accurately positioned three planets that it has, or at least the planets we've discovered so far. So there's uh, planet B, C, and D. Now, all three are more massive than Earth, uh, several masses of Earth, as a matter of fact. So in a sense, they're kind of similar to, I guess, Uranus or Neptune, although not as massive. But in terms of the actual size, they're significantly larger than Earth. So let's start with the closest planet here, Kepler-51b. Now, you'll notice that it's relatively hot here, and that's because its atmospheric pressure is actually very high. Um, and uh, it doesn't really look any different from Earth, except that it has a very, very, very thick atmosphere. And in terms of the actual um, parameters, if I were to place Earth next to it, you would see that Earth is, by size at least, significantly smaller. As a matter of fact, in terms of the actual radii, it's something like seven times smaller than Earth, even though its mass is only double of Earth. So in other words, it's two times the mass and then seven times the radius of our own planet. And it's orbiting around its parent star approximately every 45 days, meaning that it's actually deep within the red part of a habitable zone here. In other words, none of these planets are in the so-called Goldilocks zone. None of them would actually have liquid water. Too hot here. Unfortunately, the recent observations were not able to look at Kepler-51c, but we were able to study and analyze Kepler-51d, and what we discovered here is, well, something similar really. We've discovered that this planet, and as you can see here, it's sort of like a small ice giant, uh, has mass of about 7.6 masses of Earth, and also um, its actual radius is something like 10 times the radius of Earth. So here, Earth would be even smaller than before. The density for both of these objects is very, very low. So here we have a density of about 0.04 grams per centimeter cube, and Kepler-51b has it at approximately 0 0.06 uh, grams per centimeter cube. And uh, like I said before, this is comparable to cotton candy. Basically, very, very airy, almost like a cloud-like uh, formation. Even though here it may not look the same, it's definitely a lot more atmospheric and a lot more airy. As a matter of fact, I think this representation in Space Engine does it the most justice. So this is the most airy object you can kind of imagine. Now, I guess the last question that I wanted to answer is how were these uh, so-called super puffs formed? So in other words, what really made them and how do they exist in such a weird sort of formation and this very low density? And the answer to this is um, planetary migration. In other words, these used to be very similar to planets like Uranus and Neptune, and they were created on the outskirts of the solar system. So, in other words, let's use Kepler-51b as an example here. So here it is, millions of years ago, uh, relatively far away from its home star, and it's basically an ice giant right now. It's very similar to Neptune or Uranus, very, very cold, mostly composed of ices. Um, at some point, 
for possibly many reasons, it started to get closer and closer to its star and reach the orbit where a lot of things started to essentially evaporate and melt and create large amounts of gas. And the closer it got to the star, the more gas it started to um, acquire, which then basically created very, very thick atmosphere around it. So thick, as a matter of fact, that it literally turned into this really, really crazy, super poofy planet. Now, in essence, this is kind of what would happen to Neptune and Uranus if they were closer to our sun as well. But in this particular case, these three planets actually moved so close to their parent star that it seems like the atmosphere itself may actually be evaporating from these planets. And so in a few millions uh, or possibly at least a billion years, they might actually become completely stripped of the atmosphere and look similar to, I guess, Mercury. And whether this will happen or not is, I guess, another story, but um, we definitely know that these planets are losing a lot of atmosphere. Well, anyway, let's finish this video by flying through the atmosphere of Kepler-51c just to see what it, it all looks like, but also land on the surface and look into the skies where the Kepler-51 star might be. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Subscribe and potentially share this video with people that you think might enjoy space videos and want to learn through video games and simulations. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.